Hi everybody. Uh, my name is Sharat, and I work for the uh, Solaris uh, Engineering Team. Uh, we are, uh, and I work out of the India Engineering Center in Bangalore, uh, and I specifically work on uh, you know device drivers for the Solaris operating system. And here, uh, I'm here to talk about building high quality C, C++, C and C++ applications today. Uh, you know, just just before I start, I just wanted to get a feel of you know what you know what we've uh, usually worked on. So, how many of you here have worked on uh, you know Sun Studio and you know Sun Compiler Suite or so on, so on and so forth? How many of us here have done that? How many of us here have used GCC? Most? Yep, quite a lot of us. Okay, great. So, before we uh, I start off. This is uh, this is what we'd be doing today. Uh, the agenda is uh, we'd be looking at uh, how multi-core systems. How do we actually uh, program for multi-core systems, and what we need to keep in mind before we actually program for multi-core systems, and the challenges involved. Uh, the talk is also centered behind four pillars of application development. You know, those being platforms, you know, parallelism, performance, and productivity. So. We'd be we uh, we'd be covering these four pillars of application development, and we'd also look at uh, how Oracle Solaris Studio uh, would uh, help us in, you know, building these holding these pillars strong. So I have quite a few slides, and I have quite a lot of demos lined up as well. So uh, let's run through the slides, and then we'll uh, do quite a lot of demos. We'll see how we could you know debug how we could. Uh, uh, Profile your applications and so on and so forth. So, so here uh, we have some. Uh, we have uh, James Gosling today spoke about multi-core processors. Uh, Ten years ago, we've you know we've we we were used to single-threaded processors and we expected to get speed out of processors. You know when uh, we, you know with increased clock rate. You know there was a huge gigahertz raise as as uh, we know as we knew it, and now the gigahertz race is, is isn't so valid anymore. People have started to add cores to you know chips, and we've started to scale horizontally. So, what do we need to keep in mind when we develop for multi-core? You know, we have how do we utilize multi-cores? We've always thought of the traditional approach of developing for multi-core, where you know. We, we were using single-threaded and you know multi-threaded multi applications, but now that we have different cores, how do we suddenly adopt to multi-core uh, to the multi-core scenario? We use something called as virtualization. Virtualization is uh, you know you could actually use you could part compartmentalize and uh, and use deploy operating systems on you know you could deploy virtual operating systems and you know use different cores. You could use something called as containers. You saw zones being demoed here just a, a while ago. You could what you could do with zones also is you could say zone A could use CPU A, zone B could use CPU B, and so on and so forth. If you have multi-core machines, you could use you could assign different cores to different zones. You know you have you also have application servers such as Glassfish and so on and so forth. They they allow you to manage thread pools and so on. And you all you could also build threaded applications. Threaded applications meaning Create creating uh, you know using p threads or uh, OpenMP for instance. When you use threaded applications, what do you also do? When you use threaded applications, you depend on the operating system to provide you solid multi-core scalability. So Oracle Solaris Solaris operating system actually scales to multi-core processors. So when you create a thread. You know your thread could, you know, could execute on one uh, on any of the cores or any of the, uh, any of the processors, depending on how you've configured your operating system. So you could use pthreads or OpenMP threads to actually write programs, to actually write multi-threaded applications and use multi-core multi-core uh, functionality. Today we have a lot of vendors, Intel, AMD, you know, all of them give you multi-core chips. Four cores, and you know, in our Spark systems, we have a lot of cores. So, this talk is mostly about uh, Oracle Solaris Studio and how we would uh, use it. 
Most of you are familiar with the term Sun Studio here. Sun Studio was, it's, it's been recently, after the acquisition, it's been recently renamed to Oracle Solar Studio. It's basically a suite of compilers, the integrated development environment. It's based, out of Net, it's based on NetBeans 6.5, at least the latest version. Uh, you could use Sun Studio to you know, build, tune your apps, your, uh, you could build, compile, tune, all of that using Sun Studio. You, we have different tools that, ships, that ship along with Sun Studio. We'll look at uh, most of them. With Oracle and, you know, uh, and Sun coming together, you would have probably seen this before, but we, we can now give the whole suite. The whole, uh, you know, the complete stack is available from the same vendor. You know, right from applications to systems and storage. So that it's completely integrated and this is very advantageous. So you could build applications for you know, Oracle Solaris as well as Linux uh, you know, using Sun Studio or uh, you know, Solaris Studio. Uh, I, I still use the term Sun Studio, but you know, mostly I would refer it to as Solaris Studio from now on. So they're, they're all the same as we discussed earlier. So you know, we could, we could you know, offer solutions so, you know, right from the applications to storage. Oracle is the leader in the first three applications, middleware and database, but, but with Sun and Oracle coming together, we can offer the complete package. So, what, what, uh, when you uh, traditionally designed your applications, you would have designed it keeping in mind uh, single cores. So, suddenly now that we have a burst of multi-core multi -core computers, how do you retrofit? How do you re retrofit? Uh, you need to rethink. So you need to rethink, you need to probably re-architect. That is expensive, right? So this is a common challenge. Now that you know, we're not growing up in clock speeds anymore, we need to re-architect and rethink as to how do we scale and how do we ut utilize the different cores that we have. Uh, we have certain uh, f uh, performance and uh, features within Oracle Solar Studio which will actually let us uh, use some of these multi-core systems without actually re-architecting re your applications. We look at some of those. With Oracle Solaris Studio, uh, we, it's an end-to-end -end development tool. What, what, what you do get to do is build uh, OpenMP applications, uh, which is OpenMP is actually an open standard to, you know, to create multi-threaded applications. It's similar to pthreads. You could also build Thread apps. Uh, you could uh, you could you have a DBX debugger, DBX debugger with the DBX debugger. You could use it as a standalone debugger, or you could uh, and it's also integrated with an Oracle Solaris Studio. You could debug your apps. You could step through them. You could have breakpoints and so on and so forth. And you could you could also analyze your threads when you have multiple thread uh, when you have multiple uh, when you have multi-threaded apps. It, it it is kind of hard for you to figure out what your threads are doing. How, how are they performing? What, what locks are they holding? What, what are they not? So with, the, uh, with some of the features that we have, you could actually go through them. I have quite a few demos which will actually show you and will give you a clear picture. We'll come to the demos in a moment, though. We have something called as the performance analyzer and D-Lite. So D-Lite here is of uh, specific interest. It uses uh, the retrace infrastructure on Solaris. And we can actually profile uh, our applications. Uh, our live, you can actually profile live applications as they're running. So we look at Delight as well. So all of these put together, you, you have a suite of tools, and we call it Oracle Solar Studio now. So does, does Oracle Solar Studio just, does it run on Solaris only? Uh, we actually support all of our Oracle Solar Studio on Linux as well. We have full support uh, on Linux and on not, not just Oracle uh, Enterprise Linux, but several popular uh, Linux distributions. We have, uh, apart from just that, we have improved GCC capability. We'll be looking at, uh, if you've been a GCC developer, it would actually be easy for you to move to Oracle Solaris Studio and use uh, uh, the suite. When it comes to the Solaris operating system in specific, uh, we have something called as the binary guarantee program. Uh, in, in terms of the binary guarantee program, what we guarantee is applications that you developed 10 years ago targeting the Solaris operating system 
will still run on the latest and the greatest version of Solaris. Which means to say that if you built a really old application and if it's not running on the, uh, if you build a really old uh, application on Solaris, you know, probably as far back as Solaris 2.6, we've had 2.6, we've had 2. You know, Solaris 2.8, which is Solaris 8, 9, and Solaris 10, and now Open Solaris. Applications that run, you know, that were running back on 2.6, they will run unmodified. You don't, you don't need to recompile them or anything. It, it would just run fine on the latest and the greatest version of Solaris. So we, so we maintain bi uh, binary compatibility throughout because we have something called as a AB, uh, stable ABI, uh, which is an application binary interface, which determines how function calls are made and so on and so forth. So because of the stable ABI, ABI we can actually guarantee binary compatibility on, uh, uh, on Solaris. Uh, we actually have binary guarantee, uh, uh, the binary guarantee program. If you have an application that was running earlier and doesn't run anymore, get in touch to us. Uh, get in touch with us. Uh, I just signed up to this program a few weeks ago, and you know we'd be handling some of your issues. So far, we, uh, you know issues that we've seen is you know people have either used deprecated APIs or so on and so forth or undocumented APIs, which is why they don't run on the latest and the greatest OS. But uh, they are supposed to. They will. So here's uh, some amount of uh, binary compatibility with GCC. So you have two snippets here. The one on the right was actually compiled with GCC. And, and the one on the left, uh, you actually include, uh, you actually call hello GCC from within. Uh, you actually call hello GCC from within main. So what you, what you can do is you can actually include GCC binaries and you know you could link to them and so on and so forth. So you, from within, you know, CC, which is Oracle Solaris Studios compiler. So you actually are binary compatible with GCC. When it comes to performance, our goal uh, with the uh, st uh, Solaris Studio suite is to actually, uh, you know, is to actually perform best on all available architectures and even the upcoming architecture. So you can actually see that we have a whole, you know, we have dozens of uh, uh, records and some of the uh, available architectures we have, we, op we optimize, we work with uh, you know, processor vendors and we make sure we optimize our compilers for them. That's what we do. This is, uh, so, uh, this, this is actually some of the differences, this differences that we see between uh, Oracle, uh, you know, some of the previous versions of Oracle Studio, you know, to the, to the newer version of uh, Solaris Studio. So the one on the top left that you see is actually Sun Studio 12 versus the next update. So we continuously increase, you know, we con continuously innovate in terms of optimization. These are actually comparisons of, uh, the, uh, these are actually comparisons between uh, update 12 and update 1 in terms of how they perform for floating point as well as integer calculations. So you can see that the newer version actually performs 30 percent better than the older update uh, up, uh, than the older update for floating point performance. So we also have comparisons for GCC uh, on Spark. We have a 280 percent uh, uh, lead over Spark uh, over GCC on Spark. On Intel, of course, we have uh, on floating point we have a 100 percent lead. Uh, this was again. The, we use a benchmark suite called SPEC. Spec, uh, we use the ben, bench, spec benchmarks to uh, verify the to verify these. Okay, so we now we will we will now look at how do we actually develop for multi-core. So we have a certain feature called automatic parallelization, which which ships with Oracle Solar Studio. Let's say you have you have an old application that you'd want, and you'd want to leverage new cores, we actually, we actually have something called as the automatic parallelization feature, that, which, uh, which is actually given here. It's just a simple flag to CC. Uh, you, 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 if you actually look at the line below, it says CC minus X auto par. When you do that, when you do a CC minus X auto par, you actually turn on something called as automatic parallelization. CC will create one binary, with and when you have an, uh, an environment variable called parallel equal to two set, 
variables. Whenever you run the binary, depending on this variable, you would actually create so many number of threads. If your operating system is uh, core aware, is multi-core aware, you would actually pa parallelize your program automatically. What parts of your programs are parallelized? Usually the loops, you know, such as you know these, the addition loop that you see here, a equal to I, uh, you know, a of ij equal to b of ij plus c of ij. So these loops can actually be parallelized. So this is done automatically by the compiler. So you have the same version of the binary here with the x auto par flag set and with uh, before and after uh, parallel equal to 2 you actually see a much you have a you see a gain in the amount of time Yep. Mic testings are usually some of the most entertaining sessions in a session, but <laughs> hopefully the demos will be a lot more exciting. Yep. So you just saw how AutoPAR works. Uh, I don't have a demo of AutoPAR, but uh, I have a lot more other demos coming up. But if you if you also look at AutoPAR, this is how these are again spec benchmarks with AutoPAR enabled and without AutoPAR. If you have AutoPAR enabled, you actually the yellow bar is the yellow bar is the one with AutoPAR, and the, the other one is the one without. So without the without modify, uh, you know, without doing any source changes, but just compiling your application with AutoPAR, you actually see performance gains with this. You also have something called a single instruction multiple data, is a uh, X vector argument, with which you could, you know, fetch multiple adjacent memory locations with the same instruction, with the same with the same CPU instruction. So with, with X vector set, you know, the compiler, if you write such code, which is there on the, on the left, such as a multiplication, an array multiplication code, the compiler would automatically, you know, generate code to fetch you know, uh, you know, con contiguous blocks of code, as in a C of i equal to A of i into B of i would get converted into C of i equal to i, I to 3. It's, it's a range of values. It's about four uh, values. Uh, it, would, it would fetch it and multiply it contiguously. So that, that would be some amount of performance improvement as well. Traditionally, it's been 7%, 1 to 7%. The, all, all this is just without modifying your source. Okay, so this is, uh, we ship a few tools with uh, Oracle Solaris Studio. Uh, we'll be looking at some of these now. We already saw about auto, we already saw what auto parallel, we already saw, saw about auto parallelization. We have, we have DBX coming up, which is the graphical debugger with which you could debug your C, C++ applications. You also have performance analyzer, uh, which goes hand in hand with something called as DLight and also a thread analyzer where you could analyze different threads that you have in your program and delight we uh, we'd also be doing a demo of delight so great so this is pretty much demo time and let's get into the demos so i have a uh, fun studio here uh, i don't think the names have gone into the products as, as yet but we call them oracle solar studio uh, this is available on the IPS repository. I don't know if uh, there is, uh, for Open Solaris, you have uh, the IPS repository. It's, uh, that's where I got this from. You could go to, you know, downloads.sun.com slash sunstudio. You could get, get it off there. But 
let's look at what we can do. I have a few pre-built demos that I'd like to look at. What I'll do is, we'll, let's create a new project here. I'll say that I want to create a new C, C++ project from existing code. And I'll say, I'll use a make file generated by a configure script. So if you run the configure script, you would actually get a make file with which you could build your project. Right? I have, I have something called as a Tetris program. All of us know what te Tetris is. We used to get these video games with Tetris. Uh, let me just import this into Sun Studio. I hit next, next, next. I'll set this as the main project, and I'll say finish. So it's still opening up the project. So this we just downloaded this off the internet. Uh, this, this is a freely available GPL. Uh, it's available under the GNU GPL license. So uh, just for, just for the purposes of this demo, uh, I downloaded this. So I have this tet Tetris program. I'll set this as the main project, and I'll do a build. So it says build successful, exit exit value equal to zero. So once I did a build. You can look at after I uh, I, op I the configure file was already available. Once I did the import of the project, you know, it generated something called as a make file. With the make file, you can actually specify things like what compiler to use. In this case, we're we're actually using GCC. We're not using CC, but we're using GCC with Sun Studio. So you know, you can you can f specify different files, and you, usually it's automatically generated. Otherwise, it's you also have a wizard if you need to create a make file from scratch. So. We won't be looking that, at that, of course. There's, this is the source file. Uh, it was <coughs> credits to the authors, though. Uh, you have other features, such as code completion and so on and so forth. Let's say if I do a for i and if I do a tab, it gives me auto completion. It just gives me a whole for loop and things like that. But we'll not be looking at, uh, we'll not be looking at all of these today. Let me do a build again. Okay. What we'll do is we'll let me just run this program once for you. It it asks me what execute, executable you want to specify. This is the particular executable. It just built this. So this is this is the game. This is all the familiar. This is the familiar game we you know. Yeah, that's about it. Right. Anyways, but let's actually debug and let's see what happens. I'll do debug main project, right? So it's it's coming down one by one. Let me go to classes and there's one particular function here called one down. Okay. Let me set a breakpoint here. What happened? So it's it's we just hit the breakpoint. It's green. It's green in color. We just hit the breakpoint. I can just do a continue. I'll type in C-O-N-T, and I'll hit enter. So it, we hit the breakpoint again. So you can see that whenever I, whenever I type continue, it goes down by one. And I could also do a continue here. So we, we hit the breakpoint again. So there is actually seamless integration between the, debug, the DBX you know, command line tool as well as the GUI. So you could see that at this point in time, you could also look at what call stack is. What's the call stack? So main has just called one down with these arguments. And these are the local variables that we have. These are the values of the local variables. You could set watch, uh, you know, watches and you, know, you, could do, you could set breakpoints and so on and so forth. So this is, how, this is what you could do with DBX as such. OK, let me, let me take off the breakpoint. Some of the most common programming errors uh, when you write C, C++ code is memory leaks. What you usually do is you do a malloc and you don't free. That's one of the most common programming errors. Let's use something called as a runtime checker here, which checks for runtime, you know, which checks for memory inconsistencies during runtime. So what I do is I, I set, I unset, you know, I set a few, few things here. I'll say I, 
I'll check, check memory usages and leaks. I'll say, okay. I'll go to runtime memory checking and I'll say start. Yeah? So this starts, this, this program is being debugged now with runtime checking enabled. Yeah? So let me just play for a while so that we, let's see if we, if we have any memory issues. Yeah, so that, that should be it. I'll say quit. And here it says access check. It gives me a few tabs with memory checks. Here it shows me something called as memory leak, you know, checking started for program, and now it actually reports a couple of memory leaks for me. Now, as a developer, I would want to find where my memory leaks are. If I did a malloc, I'd want to know where the free, uh, if I've freed it or, you know, you know, because especially because C and C++ is not a garbage collected environment, right? So here it shows that I have two memory leaks. Let me just click on this particular link here. It says new window, right? Here it gives me the pointer and source where it says where you're doing a malloc. You're, you know, you're creating, you're mallocing something called as window name, and then you're doing an strcp cpy into that window name. So what I'll do is I'll right click on window name and I'll say find usages. I just did a find. And now we have about four references to window name. There's a car star. This is just the declaration. And there's an ST, there's a malloc and an strcpy. There's another str cat followed by that. And there's, you know, it's being passed, in, passed as an argument into that. Well, what are we missing? Free. We're missing a free, right? So that's, that's where our memory leak is. So we don't have a free. And the runtime memory checker actually said that we, we you know, we, we got about 13 bytes of memory leak. So if you, if, if, you, if you have a program, if you have a large enough program that you want to run through RTC, you could do it. You, you might actually find some memory leaks. You can also find you know, out, of band, you know, out of band accesses. If you've done some illegal accesses and so on and so forth, uh, RTC would be able to check for them as well. So, so this is one uh, typical memory leak example. So next, uh, 